There is an unspoken language between people and their pets, especially if they've been together for a long time. The same intuitive sense that you may have with one pet, some people claim to have with all animals. These aren't just fanciful modern-day Dr. Doolittles. Professional pet interpreters like Samantha Curry get astonishing results. I'm usually the last hope. I'm the average person comes to see me because they don't know where to turn. This is their last hope. He's a, uh, like a translator is how I would describe it. People seek out Samantha Curry when the special bond between pet and owner seems to be breaking down. She's part pet psychologist, part sounding board, and claims that her psychic connection with animals is so strong that she can often communicate with a pet even when the owner cannot. It was her work with the elephants at the San Diego Wild Animal Park that first brought Samantha's talents into the national spotlight. Well, the elephant keeper thought that his animals, the seven or eight elephants that he had, were acting a little strangely. The elephant keeper's wife, who knew of Samantha Curry, uh, had mentioned this to him, and um, I guess he figured, why not give it a try? When I realized that I was in the uh, presence of a very intelligent being, it was overwhelming for me. Zookeepers were astonished that Samantha knew things about the elephants which were not public knowledge, including the recent death of one of the herd. When it died, they took the body and they moved the body away. The elephants didn't even get a chance to touch that body or that form. The elephants at the animal park had never participated in this type of mourning ritual. And Samantha told their zookeeper that this was the source of the problem. They wanted to grieve for their friend in their own way. He just said, well, I kept the skull for some reason. I don't know why. Would that help if I put the skull in the compound? So he had done that, and then they let all of the elephants out the next day. And he said that he had heard three or four enormous cries. And then they worked all day to take and separate the tusk from the skull. And once that was done, it was as if something was listed throughout the whole herd. It's theorized in the wild that elephants will uh, have go through kind of a grief period and they'll even pick up bones of uh, elephants that have uh, died and, and carry them with them. Uh, just a chance to kind of recognize that they're not here anymore, and pay their respects, I guess is how we put it in human terms. How did the elephants communicate with Samantha? She believes that animals transmit thought with pictures instead of words, and that she is sensitive to receiving those pictures. It's almost like going back to being in kindergarten. You see the flashcards and the picture of the boat and then the word the boat. By the time you get into first or second grade, that word represents the visual impression. And Samantha uses the same kind of word pictures to talk back to her clients, like these thoroughbred show horses in Del Mar, California. These horses are working professionals, and their owners have a big stake in their success. She turned around and started telling me things about the horse that only I, as the rider, would know about. Toby's a jumper. <laughs> Great horse. I first met Toby um, because he was having some problems with jumping. He was doing very well in the warm-up ring. And he'd go in the show ring and, like, pull four rails. And it just felt to me that his concentration wasn't there. Toby gave me visual impressions originally on how he was jumping and um, that he didn't understand that this is really serious business. He's much more, he was much more playful. <laughs> As I talked about going over the jumps, that what he needed to do was just lift his legs up just a little bit higher, tuck them up close to his body, and then that his relationship with Mark was a business. When Samantha was communicating with Toby and how he should be jumping over the fences, she would go ahead and grunt. Well, Toby now grunts over certain fences. He doesn't grunt over every single fence, but every time he goes over a fence really well, 
and he, he grunts, he's doing it in, in fairly good form. So I have to associate that with something that Samantha did. I think it would probably take me a whole year to what Samantha's been able to accomplish um, through the two month period of, of just communicating with him once. Toby is just one of many success stories Samantha has had working with horses at this facility, but not everyone is convinced. Well, I'm not really sure what to expect. I'm not very familiar with this stuff, but I guess I gotta be open-minded. It's only natural that many animal owners are skeptical before their first session. Diamond has recently become unruly, refusing to trot properly. After his owners went through the usual course of behavioral specialists, they decided to try something different. This is amazing. Well, she must be doing something, because I've never seen him do this. I've never seen him gait naturally uh, like he's done here. I've never seen him do that. And that was one of his deficiencies, is he doesn't foxtrot like, like he's supposed to. Although Samantha consults with many professional animals and their trainers, the bulk of her work is with family pets. After 30 years of practice, Samantha has successfully brought thousands of pets and their owners closer together. But for client Julie Ritter, better communication with her dogs brought some surprising revelations. I was kind of wondering if something ever happened to the marriage, I wasn't expecting it, and I had to split up the 10 dogs, who would go with who? Julie brought her dogs to Samantha and asked her to interpret their preferences. One dog gave an answer that just didn't make sense at first. So we come to Scruffy. I said, well, who would you go with? She said, I'd go with the little boy. I don't have any kids. So I said, what little boy? And she said, well, the little boy that lives next door. Well, where am I? And, well, you're at church. And she said, well, the lady and my husband go down the hall. And I thought, oh my God, the only thing down the hall is bedrooms. And I went, oh! My gosh, you're having an affair while I'm at church. And I started to laugh. I mean, the whole thing was hysterical. I'm talking to this lady with her eyes closed and dogs running around. And the irony is we continued to work on the marriage, but ultimately it did die. And he married her, and the dog slept on the little boy's bed. Samantha believes everyone has the ability to communicate with animals using word pictures. It takes time and practice, but the rewards can be great. All the visual pictures are all in the brain, and then as you magnify and align your emotion with that visual, then the animal can understand you. If this is the key that will unlock the mystery of human-animal communication, Samantha Curry says we will all benefit from a more humane world. Samantha Curry believes most people have the ability to receive visual messages that have been psychically transmitted by their pets. She suggests that the three essential elements to improving human-animal communication are concentration, patience, and love.